Kevin Miller, go ahead and open us up in prayer. Well, Lord, just want to thank you for a beautiful day today. We just want to thank you for the faithful showing up here this evening. We just want to pray, Lord, that you'll keep us uh, attentive to what you have for us here this evening, Lord. And we just pray that you give our preacher the liberty to preach or to teach. Mm -hmm. And just to glorify you through it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The next song we'll sing, it's called Take My Life, Let It Be. This has been a song that's just been on my heart this year. I don't know why, but I just want the Lord to consecrate me how I want to be. Let's sing this. shine before man that they may see your good works. 
and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And uh, what this is, just a little bit of gospel out of what's been happening in the mission. In March of 2019, the Lord started preparing my heart and being to have the utmost compassion on people here in the Wabash Valley. Due to his excellent greatness, our Savior opened the door to the Lighthouse Mission Homeless Shelter to reach people. Since then, the gospel has been preached and many have received the Lord, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. And now have life more abundantly. And I write it. And I write it. Like a man. Funny enough, it seems when someone as big as Jesus enters into your life, he starts to make his way out. And as well in the lives of these individuals, this is how he shows himself worthy, how he shows himself acceptable and reasonable to all men. There was a man named Bill that came to the mission on a sunny afternoon in 2020, after the infamous COVID-19 scare. When I first met Bill, he was broken, emotionally and physically. Bill only intended on staying at the mission a couple of days. But after talking to him about Christ, he added that he knew the Lord as his Savior, but life was on a personal detour. Finally, he stepped into the church. Bill states, my first Sunday I felt I had found a home church, a family. I've been at Eastside over a year now, and it's always fellowship full of love. Bill has helped me with Bible studies, and now as a front desk keeper at the mission. He states, with, with the help of the teaching and preaching at Eastside Baptist Church, it has been a blessing that has helped me grow in my walk with the Lord. I'm looking forward to seeing what God is going to do in 2022. The Bible states, For when I was hungry, you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. The mission feeds the homeless and unfortunate in the community of Terre Haute. They have clothed many, though they have nothing themselves. The Lord always finds a way to bless. Our church has benefited immensely because of the heart of the people from the mission, and though we give to them, we could never impute how much they have given to our church family at Eastside Baptist Church. Amen. 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 In Christmas, we tried to give at, at Christmas, Eastside children from ages 4 to 12 gave Christmas bags to our mission family. The bags consisted of toiletries, socks, gloves, and much more. It is one way we can give back for what the mission has given to us. But achievements that have been made this year, certificates have been awarded to many mission people coming to our discipleship hour on Sunday mornings, precepts such as Bible doctrines, the basics of what it is to be a Christian, and eternal salvation have been taught and learned. Recently our classes went through the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says, ye shall know them by their fruit, is what Christ exclaims. And the fruit of true salvation is still evident, even today, in our ever so crazy world. We have seen what God has done in 2021. And we must see what God can do in 2022. Amen. Amen. And I already say that three people have received the Lord as their Savior since this year started. Amen. And I believe that God's going to keep on doing great and mighty things. Amen. I know I don't talk about it much, but it's on my heart all the time be praying for the Lighthouse Mission and uh, be praying for the people that come into this church from the highways and the edges. Amen. Amen. With that, uh, that's my prayer request that God would keep on bringing people to us. Amen. But enough about me and enough about that. Uh, anybody else have a prayer request? It's on there. Yes, Pray for Wanda. She has a really bad respiratory thing going on. She's been to the doctor several times, and she has new medicine as of today. But please pray for her. And also, I have the praise. My husband got his PSA report back today, and it was 0 0.041, and that's, she's cancer-free right now. Amen. 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 All right. That's a, that's a blessing. Yes. Reverend Terry Jackson, he has a respiratory problem, too. They, he's had it for a little while, and uh, that's Here why he hadn't been in church. 
they can't identify it? Or? No, they haven't identified it yet, and they're still searching and probing. They just know it's not cancer, and so. Uh, yeah. But he can hardly breathe, and uh, it's been going on for over a month, but well, longer than that. And so uh, it's got him down. He's had to uh, put both of his jobs on delay or quit, you know, and uh, he worked at, at a hospital in Clay City, Clay County, and uh, also at Ivy Tech. But right now, he just having a hard time talking for very long. So he needs prayer. Yeah. He watches this online. Hello, Terry. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> but uh, we miss him and uh, Kelly as well. Amen. Yes, Miss Kim. The Means family. Um, Tim uh, passed away from COVID, and he's only forty, and he's got two little boys and a wife. Oh. And pray for Rob Griffin. Uh, he's under the weather to say. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Pray for my sister Barb. She's still going through um, difficulties uh, with her kidneys and her last name stones. As well. Huh? The last name Thomas as well. Yes. Or, no, actually it's Birchfield. Okay. And my mom had COVID. She came to it okay. And my niece and nephew had it. They they came to it okay. And my brother didn't catch it. That's and he was around it. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Praying for your fellow Christians. We're all going to be going through, every year. You're going to be going through something. Just be praying for people. Yes. I think we need to remember by and prayer. When she's yeah. going through her treatments. Gone. Well, many have an unspoken request. Alex, I'm going to have you play something soft. <laughs> you want to. Yes. Don't forget to pray for Drew. Oh, he's my son's sick, but I didn't think much about it. I guess <laughs> he, he's he's going to the weather because he's got teeth coming in, and on top of that, he's got the sniffles and everything else. And he's got a pretty high fever, but I believe it'll go down. So be praying for him. Really, be praying for destiny. Yeah. <laughs> I have stayed. <laughs> Uh, the Lord says you can, he'll make a way of escape. And I had the temptation of probably wanting to yell and go nuts, but he made the way of escape. So praise the Lord. Let's come to church. Amen. <laughs> now, uh, in all seriousness, study, I pray for him. But if you want to come to the altar and 
bring your petitions to him. He's more than welcome to. I'm going to have Alex uh, play soft. And... I'm going to have Noah open us up in prayer. church needs you more in 2022 than it's ever needed you before. Lord, this church needs to get back to the basics of looking for your return and knowing that it's evident and that it's going to happen very soon. But that that is not the only thing to focus on. We're supposed to focus on souls. We're supposed to focus on fellowship and getting closer to you and fighting the battle daily. The old people are supposed to focus on being an example for the young people. And the young people are supposed to focus on trying to grow up to be more like you. And Lord, if we've gotten our eye off the ball, I ask that you would help us get our center. Get back to what matters most, and that is 
following and serving you and getting rid of the weights and the cares of this world, the Bible still says, let us lay our weight down. Let us cast it to the side. Let us get rid of our sin. Let us learn to run in patience. And let us look for your appearing. God, I ask you to help this church tonight. I ask that you would bless the prayers that have gone up. Lord, I ask that you would calm our hearts, give us the peace that we need, that passes all understanding. Lord, give us that joy. Oh, God. I do ask that you would bless our pastor tonight as he preaches. With enough of the world that's been going on and everything that we hear on the headlines and everything that we can't run away from because everybody likes to talk about what's going on in today's current world, Lord, I ask that you would bless our pastor and fill him up with your word that we can get a direct word straight from you because I am sick of hearing about what the world has. I don't have a Bible that's written from the world. I have a Bible that's written from you. God, I ask that you would help this church tonight. Give us something that we can only call manna because it's from heaven. We trust you and we're looking for you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> we don't really have time for the song, but there's a verse that just makes me happy. You know, I know that some of us have talked about death. This is what is taken from a portion of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says in Matthew 5 and verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth. Yeah. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. Boy, that's a phrase that we use in the world, huh? That's good for nothing. <laughs> Got it from the King James Bible, amen? Got it from the words of the Lord Jesus. It stands for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Jesus talks about us being the salt of the earth. We're talking about Israel, believing Israel. Those that were believers, they were the salt of the earth. That's who he's addressing. But I think we can apply it to the church today. Believing Christians. There's a lot of people who call themselves Christians, but they're not believers. Right. Yeah. And uh, right. I was one of them. I called myself a Christian, but I was not a believer. But for the believers, uh, we're the salt of the earth, he says. Yeah. And the only reason we're the salt of the earth is we got him in us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says, have salt in yourselves. Well, he's the salt, brother. Yeah. But uh, there's many applications of this tonight. As we'll talk to you about salt. Salt. I even brought some salt with me. Amen. <laughs> a little bag of salt. Let's put it in the salt book there. Okay, where people can keep their eye on the salt. So what you going to do with it? Nothing. You're just going to look at it. <laughs> I just brought it. Salt has many things that we could talk about. And we're going to talk about as much as I can fit into this tonight. Salt is a preservative. It's, yeah. it's us. Yeah. When we get out of this world, this world is going to be a total decaying mess. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the believers that across the world, the Holy Spirit in them, that's keeping this world going from totally kaput. Now, if you and, you and I look at ourselves, we say, well, well, we're in trouble then. <laughs> Amen. I may be, can everybody see me okay? Am I backlit too much? Sis, could I have just those lights there just turned up just a tad? As the Japanese say, skosh bit. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay. 
So, um, a salt is a preservative for meat. Have you ever ate salt pork? Amen. Well, you, you, it's good to rinse it off for you. <laughs> eat it, amen, or you'll be puckered in your mouth. Um, if it wasn't for salt in the ocean, man, it would surely stink terribly. Salt preserves the oceans and things that decompose in the ocean. The salt uh, helps break all of that down. You ever think about that? The right measure of salt is good for your body. Now, too much, you retain water. And then you have trouble with your heart. And you have trouble with your breathing and all kinds of inflammation. But if you have too little, your muscles start cramping. You know? So, um, you've got to have the right amount of it. Um, it was once used to pay the Roman soldiers. Salt was. That's why we get the word salary. It's salary. When you get a salary, that's where it comes from. Um, paying them in salt. Giving them money to buy salt. It's called a salary. So, it's interesting to understand that. You ever heard somebody say, well, he or she's worth their weight in salt? You don't value, see the value of salt until you start looking into it, and especially when it starts disappearing off the grocery shelf. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been doing that. And then it'll reappear, but... Um, if we were, went without salt, we'd be a real bland world, wouldn't it? Yeah. Your cooking wouldn't be near as good. Yeah. Amen. So this salt that Jesus is talking about talks about believing Israel and believers today that are Christians. You ever had something that tasted too salty? Have you ever had soup that was too salty? Yeah. No, well, there's one thing you can do to it is you can dilute it. Okay. Or you can take a tater, a raw tater, and put it in there and cook it off. And uh, that will absorb some of the salt, but you better take the tater out before you eat it. You don't want to eat that tater. Okay? It's kind of like Lot, you know. I mean, Lot had the salt. He, he, he went down the... He went down in there to Sodom and Gomorrah and got diluted and polluted. You know, if you want to preserve meat, you put it on it while it's fresh, not when it's decomposing. When it's decomposing, the meat's going to be no good and the salt's going to be no good. And so what he went down there to Sodom and Gomorrah and he was diluted. You got, I mean, putting him in, listen, how many... Have you ever had a gargle salt water? You take, you take a spoonful and you put it in hot or, or, or warm water and you stir it up real good. You can't drink it, but you sure gargle it. You wouldn't want to drink it. No, sir, you wouldn't want to drink that. But you take that same tablespoon or teaspoon of salt and put it in three gallons of water and I dare say you won't even know it's there if you hadn't drunk it all. It's diluted. It's lost its savor. Salt by itself doesn't lose its savior, but Jesus is not talking about the real properties of salt. He's talking about you. Yeah. And you lose your savior. Just like Lot lost it. His wife, I don't know if she ever had it. And so she got salted down before she left and turned into a giant-sized salt shaker. Salt loses its savor when you lose your desire for God. Salt loses its savor when you lose your desire to serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'll say it now, but I'll say it again Sunday morning. We need nursery workers in a bad way. We got the same people doing the same job all the time and missing a lot of church because we got to have two nursery workers. And if we want the church to grow and little babies, we got some more coming on the way. We're going to have to have some more nursery workers. Well, I'm not comfortable with that. Well, you know, I, I get over it, amen. You know, that, you know, I mean, you can go to a, you can go find plenty of churches in this town that have nice nurseries and no kids in them. That's yeah. the truth. Just saying. That's that's called salt. Speech seasoned with grace. <laughs> Amen. Just saying. All right, that's not my no, not in my notes. I just thought I'd say that in passing. 
But you lose your savor. The salt loses its savor when you lose your desire to work for the Lord. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Salt loses its savor when you um, when you uh, fall in love with the spirit of this world. Yeah. yeah. You'll lose your savor. I guarantee. You. Yeah. People that are more interested in what's going on in the world, they're losing their saltiness. Yeah. They lose their savor. I thank God for salt. It's got a good savor. And sometimes you need to add something. You know? And sometimes you need to wish you hadn't added some because there was already too much in whatever it was that came across the table. you got to have the right mixture. Salt loses its savor when you fall in love with the spirit of this world. When you're looking on Facebook too much. Man, I'm telling you what, I'm about done with it. Yeah. I've been hacked so many times, I just stay off of it. I might check in and see, but I'm not posting anything. My goodness, man. You, you, you can watch stuff and waste so much time watching stuff. Watch out for the spirit of this world. Salt loses its savor when the believer falls into immoral practices. Mm. You lose your savor. Yeah. You lose your saltiness. You become dull. And uh, people, uh, uh, you know why kids can't interact? And why some adults can't interact? Because they're glued to this all the time. Yeah. And it's easier to look at this than to look at somebody in the face and actually communicate. Amen. This is a curse upon this generation. Amen. Salt loses its savor when you fall into the... Uh, love of the world and, and fall into uh, immoral behavior, immoral practices. Look into the wrong thing on a phone or on a computer. Uh, savorless salt becomes good for nothing. It's good for nothing, what Jesus said. Good for nothing. <coughs> good for nothing. Well, so let's first thing about salt is he's talking about people and salt is to be a preservative but you won't be a preservative for anybody in this world you won't be a help or a saver to anybody in this world if you fall for the wrong things you you as salt will lose your savor we see salt in sacrifices if you want to turn over to mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 and we'll look there in just a moment and then we're going to look at a couple verses in the Old Testament. And I'll look at two of them and, and read them for you. Mark chapter 9 and verse 49. Jesus talking about salt. For every one shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourself. Good to have salt in yourself. Praise the Lord. Put salt in your popcorn. Amen. Amen. Not too much so. Salt. And have peace one with another. Notice that. Salt and peace. Salt and peace. you got to have both. You've got to be a little salty now and then, but not too salty. And you got to have grace. We'll talk about that in a moment. Gotta have grace to have peace with people. Uh, he's talking about a covenant of salt there in verse 49, uh, verse 49. For everyone uh, shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Now, I'm gonna take that second one first. In Numbers chapter 18, listen to this. Numbers chapter 18, verse 19. All the heave offerings and the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord, I have given thee. And thy sons and thy daughters with thee by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and unto thy seed with thee. He's talking about sacrifices, meat offerings. Had to have meat. Not only just meant meat, but it meant meal yeah. or flour. Things like that. You had to have salt with it. Why? I don't know. God said but it's a sweet savor unto him. And praise the Lord, I like putting a little salt on my bread, don't you? Amen. Yeah, amen. Coarse salt. 
You ever do that? Oh, yeah. Isn't they like pretzels? How about those hot, fresh, baked pretzels, boy? There'll be a run on those as soon as we get out of here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> going to the store and say, we can get some of those and put them in them when we get home. Get the butter out. <laughs> and the cheese. No, thank you. Not now. But uh, uh, in Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 13, he says something about this as well. Leviticus chapter 2 and uh, verse 13. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Leviticus 2 and 13 says, And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. Isn't that interesting? Salt's important to God. And he wants you to have it in you. Amen. He wants your life to be a sacrifice unto him. Yeah. Something else here. Jesus is talking to those that, uh, well, he says in verse, talks about, If thy hand, verse 43, offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than to have the two hands go to hell. Then the fire shall never be quenched. And I thank God that that's under the law and that's not under grace, amen. But he says this, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Talks about the foot and he says in verse 46, same thing. He says, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. In verse 48, he talks about that. 47 talks about the eyes. It's better to pluck your eye out and to enter the kingdom of God. One eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Verse 48, where there are worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Now, if you read that in any other version, you'll only see that where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched one time. They take it out the other times. In all your new translations, wonder why that is. They don't want to emphasize what Jesus emphasized three times. Where their worm dieth not, the fire does not quench. And he's talking about being salted with fire in hell. Right. Where everyone shall be salted with fire. Brother, if you don't have salt in you in this life, Jesus in you in this life, you're going to have to be salted with fire in hell. That's what it's, that's the idea he's trying to convey. Okay? So this covenant of salt is very important to God. The idea of having salt in yourselves is very important. Salt is good, he says in verse 50. But if the salt had lost its saltness, wherewith will you season it? He season it. Have salt in yourselves. Have peace one with another. Keep that in mind. Have peace one another. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Have peace one another. And he says, have salt in yourself. So the third point is this. Boy, we're going to get out early tonight unless I get the box in the open. Isn't it? <laughs> Number one, salt is a preservative. It speaks about the believing Jews and the believing believers or Christians in this age. Number two, salt is involved in sacrifice. And number three, salt is is important in palatable measure. Palatable. In other words, it tastes good. It tastes good. Have salt in yourselves. I like salt. It takes a while to consume that. Has anybody ever seen a salt shaker on a table and somebody pull a joke? And <laughs> a salt shaker and they start, start doing it. Have we seen that at our table? Have we had everybody do that, or they'll take that salt shaker and they'll put it in? It ruins a plate of food. Um, Makes somebody mad. Huh? John will put salt and pepper in your drink when you're not looking. <laughs> now watch that. But I mean, you know, that's too much salt. Ruins the plate. You can have too much salt and ruin things too. In Colossians chapter 4, would you look there? Colossians 4. This all ties us up together. Colossians 4. 
verse 6. I want you to see it. It's talking about salt and grace and salt and peace. He said there, have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another in, in Mark chapter uh, 9 and verse 50. Well, here he says in Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. It's not all to be super sweet. I don't know about y'all, but I like those pancakes with syrup on them and the salty sausage. Yeah. Sweet and salty. Though, how do you think they sell those sweet and salty granola bars? Because they're they're good combination. If it's all sweet, if your talk is all sweet and full of peace, but you don't have any salt, something to drive get them get them with some syrup first, and talk to people about some good positive, but then give them the salt. Say, let me salt that a little bit. Yeah. And they'll say, ooh. I wasn't expecting that. But they'll take that home. That salt adds savor to what you've got. Amen? Salt adds savor to what you're saying. But when you are too salty, I remember when I was a young believer in Bible college, I was too salty. Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to witness to somebody, and I didn't care how I did. And I was in the Bible college, and they were taking pictures of everybody in the Bible college. And we'd go into this room, and I thought, I wonder if that photographer's saved. I wonder if that photographer's saved. I wonder if he's saved. And I said, sir, are you saved? He said, well, I, I'm okay, you know. Anyhow, I kept going. I said, man, you need to be saved, you know. You're going to go to hell if you don't get saved, man. And uh, he got so flustered that he took all those photos and he dropped everything. This is before computers. And he drops everything all over everywhere. And he has to re-catalog everything. There was no point in me saying a thing after that. <laughs> it was time for me to get out of there. But I was salty. And I felt bad after that. I said, man, I done messed it up. I was all <laughs> 21 years old. Uh, yeah, 21 years old, buddy. But I knew. I hate to tell on myself like that. <laughs> but that was being young and stupid. You can be too salty. You go knock on somebody's door and talk to them, and especially since post-COVID. And you try to get real salty with them, and brother, you're going to have the door slammed in your face. <laughs> Or if they pray a prayer with you, it's just to get rid of you, probably. Especially now on a cold night. Amen. <laughs> gotta, you got to have God on you. When you're too salty, you repel others. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had some food put before me here a while back. And I said, Phew, too salty. Too salty. Too salty. It repels you. And when you're too salty, you rebel people. You don't draw them to you. Amen. you got to have salt seasoned with grace or speech seasoned with grace. And what does he say there? Let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt. Man, you ought to know how to answer every man. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell them everything. And I'm going to tell them what's wrong down there at the workplace. And I'm going to tell them, if they say anything wrong, he says, I'm going to rebuke them. Yeah, you'll be without a job, too. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> you go down there to where you work, and uh, everything you see that's wrong, and see how that works out. And you start rebuking people. You know? It didn't really work. There's a time and place for everything. And we have to have grace seasoned with salt. What does Jesus say there? In uh, Mark chapter 9 and verse 50, salt's good, but salt have lost its saltiness. Wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace. Talks about grace in Galatians 4. Now he's talking about peace. So you've got to have salt, grace, and peace, and it's a nice combination. You hear me? 
It's a good combination. When you learn that balance, and the Holy Ghost will teach you that, you get too salty, and after you do that, and you upset the apple cart, well, the Holy Ghost will let you know, boy, you done did it again. Young Christians have a problem with that. Some old Christians have trouble. I'm telling you what, what, what do you do when you fly off the handle at somebody and tell them everything you're thinking about it? What you did is dump the salt all over their food. Yeah. The whole, the whole bag. That repels them. Now I'm going gone from gone from preaching to meddling them. <laughs> when you blow up, it's like dumping the whole salt shaker out in one swoop. One swoop. What you need is salt, grace, and peace. Or tasty, tasty combination. Amen. I hope that'll be a blessing to you. I hope you'll think about that. Salt is so important. More so than we could ever imagine. Go look up salt on the internet and see how important it is. We couldn't get along with that. And you, as a believer, can't get along without that spiritual salt. But make sure you have the right amount Amen. with grace and peace coming from your heart. Mm. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, we thank you now for the seasoning of the Word of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the blessings of balance that you give us. Lord God, help us not to have tunnel vision. Let us have the vision of the Lord. Let us not have the speech of a Pharisee. Lord, let us have the speech of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salt when he needed to give it. And grace when he gave it. Lord, I pray, God, you would help us to be that way. Lord, having salt and not losing the savor because of the world, because of wickedness and sin. <clears throat> oh, God, may we temper ourselves. May we measure ourselves against the measure and stick of the Word of God. Lord, we're going to trust you to do a work in our hearts and help us to meditate upon these things. might grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and be able to bring somebody along with us. And Lord, we might have a real positive influence on somebody. With grace, peace, and salt. Salt when it's needed. Lord, help us not to be bland. Some things just have a good savor and a good bite with a little bit of salt. God help us now. Have thy will to be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope you got a blessing from the Word of God tonight. Amen. Take that home with you. Think on those things been thinking on salt since Monday. It's a blessing when you're reading the Word of God and then all of a sudden something just pops out at you. Isn't that a blessing when that happens? And then when it, when it does, then meditate on it a little while. Amen. And if you need to look something up, do that. Even if it's on a Google site, be surprised what you can learn just about natural things. The Lord uses natural things like salt and light candles and bushels and gates and trees to teach us some things about what we need to do. Amen. All right. Let's all stand and sing a verse of amazing grace. Amen.